Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now this week's video is another one in the classic uh, cameras from the past series of videos that I've been doing. Uh, but before I show you, show you the camera, just a word about uh, film and why I personally like to use film as my way of capturing images. Now there are many reasons apart from, you know, I've got the choice of different film sizes, different types of film to give different looks. Uh, apart from, you know, the, the the fun of going out and not having a, an instant uh, preview of what you've taken. All that anticipation of, of uh, taking a picture and hoping through the knowledge that you've gained using uh, film uh, regard, as regards exposure, etc. That the, you've got that uh, anticipation that the negatives have all turned out. And uh, it's that anticipation that uh, creates, uh, for me, more fun than using uh, digital cameras. Now, there's nothing wrong. I'm not pulling digital photography whatsoever. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, way of, of creating images. But for me, I don't feel as involved in the picture taking process using a digital camera as against using a, a, a film camera. Now, digital cameras, um, you're always uh, tending to try to keep, to keep up with uh, increased uh, technology, you know, as they get more advanced and the older models that you've uh, you've had before you tend to update those to keep up with this technology and and behind it is a wake of uh, cameras that are really never never going to be used but that doesn't apply uh, to film cameras there are literally hundreds literally thousands of film cameras out there that um, that still take very good pictures and they come some a lot of them come at a, a very uh, reasonable uh, price. The only uh, downside uh, to the film cameras is that there's certain uh, film formats that are not available today uh, so unless you can find a way around of uh, loading these cameras with these odd film sizes they're just going to be part of uh, maybe a collection of cameras that you have. But if we take this camera this is the Voigtlander uh, Burkheil. I've done a, a video on this before uh, it's a 6.5 by 9 a box camera, bellows camera, and uh, you can't, it's very difficult to get hold of 6.5 by 9 uh, sheet film these days to use, uh, you know, film holders in the back. But the, the way around this is to use um, a, a roll film back. So you can fit a roll film back on this camera and uh, roll film like this, 120 roll film, fit it into the back of this camera and you can still use this camera and this camera was built I think round about 1927 it's nearly a hundred years old uh, this camera another one in my collection this is the Voigtlander uh, Besser RF it's a uh, 6x9 uh, folding uh, camera and um, as I say it, again this text the readily available 120 roll film and uh, it takes 6x9 negatives and as with, as with all these cameras as long as the, sh the lens is clear is not badly marked uh, as long as the shutter's working okay and the aperture uh, you're always going to get a picture because the technology lies in the film itself and not, not in the camera all film cameras uh, work the same so as I say, you, you are you're not restricted in the type of uh, cameras that you can film cameras that you can buy. I mean, I've got cameras from, I've got one that was dated 1902, and then I've got film cameras that go up to the late 80s, mid 90s, and uh, you can use those cameras exactly as the way that you use these cameras, just slightly in a more different way. They might have autofocus. They might uh, have auto exposure, etc. But they still work the same way. Light comes through the lens and is uh, it, it's uh, exposed onto the film. So unlike digital cameras, these will never really these type of cameras will never go out of date. But you are restricted, as I say, with the film sizes now. In the forties, fifties, and uh, early sixties, a very popular film format was one two seven. Now this is a, a roll of one two seven film. And this is a roll of one 
20 year old film. And this film went out of favour because I think that people tended to like the bigger size of these negatives. But it's not a small, it, it, it creates uh, decent size uh, negatives. Uh, you know, it's nearly uh, two times bigger than a 35mm negative. So it follows that you're going to get better quality. And the, the, the cameras out there that take 127 film, uh, at one stage in, in the, the sort of the film's decline, uh, it was very difficult to get hold of the 127 film. Uh, you couldn't put roll film backs on some of these cameras, uh, so they became part of a part of a collection, etc. But now there's ways coming out that uh, you can cut roll film down, 120 roll film, and re-spool it onto the 127 uh, uh, spools, and you can use it in the uh, the 127 cameras. Uh, you can even now buy uh, film that's ready made in the 127 format. Uh, there's a few firms that one comes to mind it's what I've used in the video is a, a Shanghai GP3 black and white film now it's a very <laughs> curly film but uh, the quality of the images that it produces is very very good I quite like the contrast from that film so you can get that film and that means that you can start looking at some of the older cameras that took the 127 roll film and the camera that I've been after and eventually one came up in very good condition was this it's the baby Roliflex, and this is a camera that we're going to be having a look around at uh, uh, later on in the video. It's um, it's just a miniaturised Roliflex twin lens reflex camera, and uh, it's a camera that's uh, it's small enough uh, to put in a coat pocket, and yet it will produce images of a better quality than say thirty five millimeter. Uh, you know, given that you're using the same films, so this text one two seven film. And uh, it takes very good images and you get a really great feeling using these type of cameras, especially the Roliflexes. They're absolutely built beautiful. So basically, this is just a, a scaled down Roliflex. It works the same way. You focus there. The uh, viewing lens and the taking lens move together on a, a panel. So you can acquire focus. You wind on there. T the older type ones of this model, the first one's out, had a crank and then they changed it to this knob to wind the film on. Uh, you've still got your uh, eye level viewer at the top, viewing screen there, where you look down into the screen and, and, and focus. That's the same on the bigger roller flexors, but this is just in a, a smaller uh, package. So that's the camera that I'm going to use, and that that's why I like film photography, is because I get the chance to use these types of cameras. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you a few pictures uh, that I've taken with, with the Roliflex, Baby Roliflex, and, uh, and then move on and, and we'll take a, a good look and I'll show you how this camera works and I'll tell you what I think about the camera. So let's look at some of the pictures that I took um, the, the other day using this camera and Shanghai GP3 film. Right, I'm going to set off now with the baby Rolly Flex uh, and just see what pictures I can come up with uh, using this camera, see how uh, easy it is to use and uh, just see how good the lens is. Uh, the meter that I'm going to use to do all the metering is this one, it's the Voigtlander VC2 uh, meter. I've used this quite a lot recently and it's a very, I found it to be a very accurate meter and it's just small and light and it's easy to use. Uh, the viewfinder on the Roliflex, I've just been uh, looking through it a little bit and see how, wondering how I'm going to get on with this. It's not the clearest of viewfinders um, and the focusing isn't going to be as easy as uh, say on the, the Roliflex uh, 3.5F 3. 3. I've got, but I think I will get used to that. So as I say, I'll just have a walk around uh, and see what pictures I can see uh, using this camera.
So that was the last shot out of the Baby Rolly Flex. I must say I really, really enjoyed using this camera. Uh, but I won't tell you my thoughts on it and, until I've got the, the film developed and just make sure that the camera's working okay. The one thing that I did notice with the camera, and I was using a Shanghai GP3 a black and white film, that I only got 11 exposures out of the roll. So uh, if there's any um, people out there that use this camera and use 127 uh, film, how many exposures do you get out of the, the Rolleiflex? As I say, I only got 11. And there's nothing really you can do about the Rolleiflex. There's no red window. Uh, the film's loaded automatically. As the film goes over the roller and uh, it goes over the film gate, you, you set it your first exposure and then you just keep winding on. But as I say, I only got 11. I mean, it's no big deal, but I'd just like to know if that's normal. So, I get, as I say, I'll get back now, I'll get the film developed, uh, see how they turn out, and then I'll give you my thoughts, good and bad, uh, about this uh, beautiful little camera. Beautiful little camera to use. Now, before I uh, show you around around the camera, how the knobs and the buttons etc work on it, just a word about the uh, the film and how I developed it. I know there are people out there who are interested in that. Uh, the film that I used was a Shanghai GP3 black and white film. It's a 100 ISO film. And uh, I developed that in semi-stand development in 510 Pyro. Now, I diluted the developer one part developer to 100 parts water and uh, mixed the developer up at 20 degrees centigrade poured the developer into the tank inverted it gently for a minute tapped, uh, tapped it onto the desktop to remove the air bells and then let it stand to 10 minutes just don't touch it and at the 10 minute mark I give it one gentle inversion again tapping the tank and then left it till 12 minutes then poured the, the developer out. I used water, uh, to uh, two washers in water uh, as a stop bath to stop the development and then I gave it a fix in a, an alkaline fixer, not, not an acid fixer because uh, uh, 510 Pyro is a staining developer. Uh, if you use an acid fixer it can remove that stain. Uh, you're better to leave the stain on and to do that I used an alkaline fixer and then washed the film and hung it to dry and uh, you've seen the pictures. So that's how I uh, developed uh, the film. So let's uh, move on now and take a, a closer look at uh, this uh, little uh, baby Rolleiflex. Right, before we uh, have a look around the camera and how the uh, buttons and knobs work etc, just a brief history about this camera. Now I'll be the first one to say I'm no Rolleiflex uh, expert, it's just things I've read about the camera in books etc. Uh, so I do stand corrected if I get any of the information wrong and if I do please uh, leave a, a message in the comments section just to correct me. Now the original Baby Rolleiflex uh, is a smaller uh, version of the uh, original Rolleiflex TLR camera taking 4x4cm uh, pictures on 127 roll film. Now it was introduced by Frankie and Heideck in 1931 uh, new version followed in 1933, 1934 and 1938 and then in 1937 a completely different 4x4cm Rolleiflex was released and it was this one, the Baby, Baby Rolleiflex which was the K5. The production period uh, ran from 1957 to 1968 with just over 67,000 units made. The format is 12 exposures of 4 before 4 centimetre uh, uh, negatives on 127 roll film. The taking lens, which is the bottom one, is a, uh, a Zenar 60mm f3.5 lens. And the uh, viewing lens, uh, which is a top lens, is a Heider Schmidt 60mm uh, f2.8 lens. It's a brighter one for viewing on the top lens. The bayonet size, Rolleiflexes have a, a special bayonet fitting. 
I think the Burnet fittings came Burnet 1, Burnet 2 and Burnet 3. On the Baybury Hall effects it's a smaller of what they call Bay 1 uh, size. Now the shutter on these is the uh, Synchro Compure um, MX uh, V shutter. It's a leaf shutter and its speeds run from 1 second to 1 500th of a second and it has a B setting. It can uh, synchronise with uh, modern flash units or bulb by using that lever there. Uh, the colour, the lack of colour is grey and uh, for some reason they call the leatherette grey but to me it's more of a green. But uh, that, that's what it, uh, it says in its, its history. And uh, the dimensions of this camera are 64 by 81 by 125 millimetres and it weighs 680 grams. Now if we compare the baby Roliflex with my uh, Roliflex uh, 3.5F we can see there's a, a big difference in size and I think the weight tells everything really. The, as I say the baby Roliflex is 680 grams, the Roliflex 3.5F is 1220 grams so it's it's half the weight of this camera and that's to be expected because this camera produces bigger negatives on 120 roll film. Now as I say I bought this camera because uh, I wanted to try 127 film and we can get it nowadays uh, but one of the reasons is my favourite format uh, to take pictures on is square format and uh, this camera just fits the bill really it's not that big and heavy like the 3.5 half but it does uh, it does take square negatives so let's look at the front of the camera as I say that's the uh, Xenar uh, taking lens 60 millimeter and then we have the Hydra Schmidt a 60 millimeter viewing lens now as I said that's a, a stop brighter to give you a brighter view on the ground glass screen um, <clears throat> at this side here we've got the lever for setting flash or bulb and to move that lever there's a little button at the bottom that serves two purposes if you press that in you can move that lever to bulb press it in again and you put it back to flash that button also acts as a, a self timer so if we wind the camera on uh, just before I show you that uh, I've wound the camera on but I can't uh, release the shutter and that's because uh, the uh, the ground glass uh, hood is, it, it was shut. It won't fire when that is shut. It will only fire when it's open. It releases a little button. So to set the self timer you press that button in there and then push up and then press the button and the, the set self timer activates and it takes around about uh, 10 seconds. So it's a, a really easy operation is that. That's the shutter just fine, it's nice and quiet. And here we have a, a PC socket there where you can, can connect an external flash on this camera. Um, <clears throat> the shutter speeds are set uh, on this side of the camera. They run from, as I say, one second um, right up to five hundredth of a second. Now this camera has a, what they call an interlock where let's say you um, took a reading and the exposure was 60th of a second f11 don't know if you can see that there, there just there so we can focus on that 60th of a second f11 if you wanted to stop the lens down but keep the same exposure you would just turn turn the dial and both dials move together but you're getting the same exposure but different shutter speed and different aperture but the, the exposure is the same and, and we can go the other way it's interlocked together to, to, now some people find this a little bit annoying because to set them separately you have to uh, disengage by pressing down that lever and then you can set the shutter speed independently of the aperture so let's say I wanted a, a 30th of a second at f 5.6 I just press that down the shutter speed set at 30th of a second and I'm on 5.6 you can also use the EV numbers. Now for those that don't know what EV numbers are, uh, EV numbers represent um, a light value. So if you go from um, EV11 to EV12, that's one full stop, more exposure. If you go from EV11 to EV10, 
it's uh, one stop less exposure. So if you're using the external handheld light meter, um, rather than setting the shutter speeds and the apertures, you can work the aperture using these uh, th these EV numbers. I, I I probably wouldn't use that. I like to use the shutter speeds and the apertures. Um, and that's about it on the front of the camera. Um, uh, on this side of the camera is the um, I'll shut that top is the uh, focusing knob, and it's got a, a lovely depth of field scale. This is what I love about this camera. Uh, when you turn the focusing knob there, it moves the lens uh, panel in and out to focus the camera. But you also have this depth of field scale, so you can use um, uh, hyperfocal distance. Where you, let's say we're working at f16, you move your infinity mark to f16. And then read F16 at this other side, and it's telling me uh, that the distance is roughly around about nine feet to infinity. F16 will be in focus. If I wanted to use scale focus, let's say I uh, set the camera to 15 feet at F16, and then read from the other side, it means everything from six feet to 15 feet would be in focus. So that's great for like uh, street photography. If you can get people walking within that range. You don't have to focus, just press the shutter and there will be an, an uh, accept, what they call acceptable uh, focus. It has a, a strap lug there and the strap lugs on Rolleiflex are really uh, beautifully made. The, uh, the, the great how they fasten on the Rolleiflex is they're not messing about with uh, um, you know, uh, buckles and things. You just slide it into the, into the lug like that and it locks into the place and it won't come out. And to release it, you just press down those two little metal um, plates and then just push it and it just pushes out easy. So, you know, it, it shows you how it's well thought out. It really is a, a beautiful, uh, beautifully made camera. Uh, on this side, we've got the uh, frame counter there. And I'll t talk a little bit more about that when I show you how to put some film in. Uh, another strap lug there. And this is the winding knob. Now on the... Uh, the original baby roller flexes, the, um, the, they had a, a winding crank like on the 3.5F I've just shown you, but they changed it to a knob on this camera. Uh, so you, you wind on like that, and as I say, if you press the shutter button, you cannot fire it when the, when the viewfinder is closed. You've got to open that, and then it will fire. That's uh, a great little feature is that. Uh, so that's it on that side. And the top of the camera, we've got the, the viewfinder. Um, in my experience using it, it's nowhere as bright as what you might see on the, some of the Rolleiflex cameras, the, the bigger brothers, the two, the 6x6 six six, uh, cameras. But uh, it, it's, it's quite nice. Where I do struggle a little, where I did struggle a little bit with this camera was uh, in, in the focusing. Now, to get um, the magnifier up, you press that front panel. This serves two purposes. Press that down and the magnifier pops up. And then you, you uh, focus using a magnifier. You can see all the screen through this. Um, but you focus on the ground glass screen using that. And I found that not easy to do. It's, it's not that easy. I think you can get better screens for this camera. But they're not just a flat screen. They're like a convex. Um, and, and I think it magnifies the image. Uh, so they might be difficult to get to hold of. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, let me know. So as I say, a little bit difficult, but uh, you can manage with it. Um, another feature with this front panel, um, if you press it forward, it locks down. And then you can use this like what they call a sports finder. So you acquire focus with that up, press that down. And then if you look through that square there, it lines up with this square here and that's the size of your negative that's your picture area um, so it's great for um, you know situations where you can't look down into the viewfinder or you you, you want to photograph moving uh, moving subjects now as with all these type of cameras um, when you're looking into the viewing screen what is left what you, the picture you see in front of you uh, what is left will be right on the right hand side and vice versa looking through these screens it's flipped over it's not upside down it's just right goes to left and left to right and it can be a little bit awkward till you get used to it uh, this camera you can't remove the the viewfinder the hood uh, on the larger 
uh, roller flexors and a lot of them you can do and you can swap it for a prism finder where you can use the camera at eye level and uh, everything's corrected you know uh, there's no left to right everything is as you see it when you look through the lens but as I say you can't do that work with this camera but uh, I, I, I managed with this camera it's it's uh, it, as I say it's a little bit difficult to focus but uh, it's something that you do get used to and uh, the other thing is it's got such a, a good um, depth of field scale that uh, a lot of the time you don't really have to focus unless it's critical you just use the uh, the, the depth of field scale on there and use hyperfocal or scale focus so that's that that side of the bottom of the camera We've just got a standard tripod socket. There's two little, four, sorry, four little uh, uh, prongs there, uh, so you can stand the camera up and it's not going to get scratched. And this is the release mechanism for opening the back. You slide that. It, this works exactly the same as my uh, 3.5 f. You slide that. It's a very safe mechanism. You can never accidentally open these cameras. Lift that latch up, and then with this one you have to pull up and then open the back, and it's as easy as that. Now while it's open. I'll show you how uh, to load film in this camera, although I'm not going to um, waste a roll of 127 film, uh, it's the backing paper, but I can show you how it works. So with the dead easy to load, you press that down and the spool lifts up, and I'm going to put that spool into the uh, take-up spool, just drop it in there, press it down until it locks into place, Oops, there we go, it's locked into place now. And then, this is just as I say, backing paper. Uh, this is some, a roll of 127 that I've used up. I've rolled the, the backing up. And then, um, just get this masking tape off. So, you would uh, just place the, the spool into those two little holes at each side there. Push it down. Get hold of the backing paper. Pull it up and across. And then push it into the take up spool there. And then make sure it's sort of lined up each side of the spool edges. And then just turn until it starts to wind up. Now, if this paper had a, a film in it, the roller flexors have an automatic sensor and it can detect when the film uh, starts to come over the film gate and then it. it um, it then starts to count the exposures. So what you would do, you would close the back, lock it in place, and then wind on. So you've no red, you've no start marks with these cameras, and you just wind on like that. And once the, the film goes over, it's automatically set to number one. Uh, take the shot, then you can wind on again to number two, and it'll give you even uh, frame spacing. And at the end of the roll, 12 exposures, uh, it will not lock, it will just wind the film up onto the take up spool. And then to take it out, it's the same operation uh, as putting it in by simply pulling this knob out. It, it just flipped off there, but it would, uh, the film will be wound up. Pull that knob out, it lifts up and then there's your film. And it, it's as easy as that on this camera. So. All in all, it's a really, really nice camera. It's absolutely be beautifully, uh, beautifully made. And uh, the only thing I found with this camera, of, of course, I got this uh, second hand. I've got this off a, a deal on eBay, and it really was in, in near, near mint condition. It was um, it apparently came from a collector who collected Rolleiflex cameras, but uh, sold them off. And uh, <clears throat> everything works perfectly on this camera, apart from. I think the shutter speeds, uh, especially the slow ones, uh, are slightly out, and and the camera. I think the camera does need a CLA, as with all uh, Rolleiflex cameras, they're like um, inside the cap. These cameras they're like a, a watch mechanism, and 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 they're periodically they have to be serviced else, else they won't function correctly. So I'm going to send this camera off and get the. Um, get the shutter service just to, ju and, and collimated to make sure the focus is accurate etc it's worth spending that money because uh, you know these these are beautiful cameras and if we just leave them and don't do anything with them 
they'll stop working, they'll get put in a cover, they'll never used again. If we get them serviced and keep them working, these cameras will keep running for, uh, they, well this camera's now, what, 70 years, it'll keep running for another 70 years. But you have to, it's like a car, you've got to, uh, you've got to keep serving them so they run properly. So that's it, the uh, Roliflex um, Baby Grey a K5 camera. And again, comparing it with the bigger brother, the Roliflex uh, 3.5F, you can see that going out with this camera, the baby one, is a lot easier to go out with that camera. Uh, this camera, in fact, I, I could put this in my coat pocket. I have no chance with this camera. It's just a, a, a real pleasure uh, to use. And, you, and you've seen in the pictures uh, that, um, uh, you know, it does take really, really nice pictures. So if you have any questions about this camera, just leave them uh, below and I'll try to answer them or somebody else might do. And um, I would say that, you know, uh, there are a lot of 127 cameras. This is probably the Rolls Royce of them, but uh, uh, you, you can use that this format in this day and age and it's well uh, worth trying. Right, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the pictures that I took with this uh, beautiful little camera. And, uh, and I hope you found... Uh, it helpful looking around the camera and showing you how the uh, knobs and uh, dials etc work on this camera. You know, uh, cameras like this are a real joy to use because I, I always say you hold a little bit of history in your hands and you do get a real, uh, or I do, a real kick uh, producing pictures with these types of cameras. Um, the reason I, I love this camera is because it's so small and light. I actually walked about with this camera in a coat pocket but it also takes square negatives and that's my uh, favourite uh, uh, format, I love square negatives. But because this camera is a, a 127 format uh, camera, um, it doesn't fetch the prices of these type of cameras, the Roliflex 3.5F. Now this camera uh, is nearly mint condition and it's been serviced professionally and this camera probably fetches in the region of about £1,000. I paid £250 for this camera in near mint condition, although I will have it serviced just to make sure everything's working uh, as it should do, and, and by doing that the camera will last me many more years. But uh, as I say, because it's uh, the 127 format, they do come at a lot reasonable price, and you know, you're still getting the build quality of the, Rol the larger Roliflexes in this small uh, package. You know, Roliflex uh, cameras are like a, built like a Swiss, a Swiss watch with, you know, lovely time cogs and uh, levers. They're just a wonderful piece of engineering. And, and as I say, you get in a small package at a decent price. So if you want to experience TLR photography, before you buy one of the bigger ones, the 120 ones, uh, try one of these first and just see if you like it. It does produce the, the, the 4 before centimetre negative, which I've said before. Is it nearly uh, nearly two times bigger than 35 millimeter? So you are going to get some really uh, quality pictures from it. The downside uh, to using them is is film choice. Uh, you know, it's not a popular format these days. One two seven, although there are makers who are making it now. Uh, but you can, uh, if you want to do respool from 120 roll film, uh, cut it down to the 127 format and respool respool it onto the onto the 127 spools and you can use any of the films that's out there uh, today and as I, as I showed a picture in the video there are machines that you can buy that will will cut the film for you so you know there's that option or you can buy it ready made uh, in this uh, video I shot the pictures on this uh, on this film Shanghai GP3 100 ISO film and you know I was uh, it's made in China but I was really surprised uh, the quality it had a good uh, tonal range, it had a really nice contrast, and I found that uh, you know when I scanned the I scanned the negatives on my Nikon 9000 ED scanner, and uh, uh, brought them onto the computer, and there was very little to do with them. Uh, the contrast was already there, so I think if you were in a dark room or in or just scanning, they're going to be easy negatives to work work with. I mean there are other films. There's one called uh, HP 400. I think if I'm I'm right in saying that that's Ilford HP5, but it's spooled a 127. So you know it's worth trying trying these cameras 
and, and, and using these films and just experiencing it. And it does keep these uh, beautiful cameras going instead of them stuck on a shelf in a display, you know, not being used. It keeps them going as a working photographic tool that can take very, very nice pictures. So as I said, if you, if you do buy one of these, always keep in mind they're probably not being used for years and they probably will benefit from a, a CLA which would be added to that cost. But that applies uh, to these cameras. I had to add this camera a CLA because the shutter speeds needed uh, uh, adjusting. The slower speeds were running uh, too slow. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, a like, hit that notification bell and uh, better still, you know, subscribe to my channel. And uh, as I always say, uh, stay safe and I'll uh, see you all in the next video. And I'll leave you with uh, three or four more pictures uh, on another day uh, that I took with this camera. Right, I nearly forgot uh, why I'm actually showing you these pictures. Uh, because it might be helpful to some of you out there. Uh, I did go out on a, a second day uh, with the Roliflex and I loaded some Ilford FP4 into the camera. Uh, I spent all afternoon taking the pictures and then uh, came home, developed them and when, the, when they were dry I scanned them and I noticed there was this fault uh, on the negative and this is what it looks like. I'll just zoom in and it's like a, a mottling effect and uh, it varies in density along the length of the roll of the film and also the, the sc scratches that are not running uh, dead parallel they're running at a slight angle now last year I uh, had a similar fault with Ilford FP4 um, thinking you know that it was me something to do with me in the development but I was made aware by some other photographers who had the same problem so I, I sent the scans uh, to Ilford, just emailed them to, to them, and they admitted that there was a fault with that batch. And uh, it wasn't nothing to do with me, it was the film, there was a fault in the manufacturing. So it's just, um, just to let you know that sometimes when you develop film, if you do get a problem uh, and you can't really sort it out, it's not always to do the, with the way you develop the film. It can be a fault with the, the actual manufacturer of the negative. Now, Ilford were very good. The customer service is brilliant, and they sorted this out within nearly a week. They, as I say, they, I got a letter apologising. They replaced the film with a couple of rolls extra, and um, I've had no more problems un until this time. So, as I say, be aware, sometimes it's not always you that creates these faults on the negative through development. It can be the manufacturer, and if so, uh, email them, get in touch with them, and, and if it's Ilford, they will sort it out for you. So I just thought I'd mention that. So let's look at the pictures. There's only a few because some of them I couldn't really use, uh, but I'll show you the, the, best, uh, the best of the bunch, so to speak. <laughs>